Back in 2007, Mike Huckabee was engaged in a fairly tight race for the Republican nomination for the presidency, and Mitt Romney, who would eventually go on to uh, some success, needed a strategy to try to take the wind out of his sails, I suppose, and so he dispatched one of his campaign operatives to try to dig up some dirt on Mike Huckabee, to find some strong attack that would engage the emotions of, of Americans. And so they came up with this ad. Take a look. I'm Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. This is my daughter. She was pregnant with her first child. She was murdered by a serial rapist released early from prison in Arkansas. It was Mike Huckabee's intent that Wayne DeMond be released from prison. It's a pattern of bad judgment, very bad judgment. I don't know how you could trust that person with the highest power in our country. Wow, that's a really strong ad. That is a strong ad. Yeah. Yes, uh, he is a murderer, effectively. That is what the ad is getting across. He gave uh, commuted sentences to over a thousand people and at least 12 murderers. And you are left to fill in the gaps of what the crimes of the other 990 plus people were. Now, in uh, Mitt Romney's uh, defense, and I guess this is to his credit, he took a look at that ad and decided they would not actually run it. He said that it would make him look desperate. Yeah, well, and look, Mitt Romney has a lot of problems, but he's never come across to me as a particularly cruel or heartless guy outside of the business world when it comes to his actual business decisions. I might go with, heart, might go with a heartless, heartless guy. Yeah. But he did not decide to run that ad. But it has resurfaced because now it looks like there's a chance well, of both of them being in the next presidential race. And I, Mike Huckabee still possibly could be targeted by these allegations. I no. would have played that ad. Yeah, there's also, uh, the cynic in me would suggest that this was the plan all along. You make the ad, you produce it, then you don't run it and say but you're you, not And everyone's run it. talking Everybody about it. Everybody talked about it anyway. Yeah. The Wayne DeMond mm -hmm. story was not a mystery to anyone, so it just gets it out there. You, you don't even have to. In fact, you could, you could run the ad without even mentioning Wayne DuMont and then let everyone dig up the Wayne DuMont story on their own. And then discuss and it. And run it and, and discuss it. You the know. multiplier effect um, of the advertising. You know, uh, uh, I did a lot of reading today on, on the Wayne DuMont case, which I remember vaguely from the 90s and the Clinton administration and into 2000, but didn't know well enough. And it is impossible to concisely tell you about um, because it's unclear exactly what happened, but it is a crazy case to read about and incredibly fun to dig into the politics of it right up until the point where a horrible rapist is released from prison and killed two people, yeah. uh, raped and murdered two people. But he, Wayne Dumont, after his, the, or his initial arrest, which was, was arrested for sexually assaulting the 17-year-old third cousin of Bill Clinton, very distantly related. They had the same great-great-grandparents. Um, so Clinton recused himself from that case, but two guys, according to Wayne Dumont, broke into his house before trial and castrated him, cut off his testicles. Uh, some think that he may have cut his testicles off himself, but no one was ever arrested, charged with the crime. The sheriff came in, the sheriff who was known to some as a, I don't know, this sounds like horseshit, a, a Clinton toady. Uh, but anyway, what, what, what is clear from the sheriff's own testimony is that he paraded the testicles around and put them in a jar and displayed them, to which Wayne Dumont sued him and won $110,000 mm -hmm. for whatever the law is that prevents you from <laughs> displaying another man's testicles. I believe it's a federal law. <laughs> I think and I think we're all in agreement. Don't. It's a good ruling. Yeah. yeah, we're all. So then Wayne, and so part of the argument for releasing Wayne Dumont was, hey, look, man, he's, he's castrated. Uh, turned out. Uh, it didn't matter. Still sexual. Yeah, you can so, still do some harm. Um, and then there became, and what, why Mike Huckabee is literally the least qualified person to be president and should be stopped at all costs is, it's not so much that he released this guy because, you know, the fact is if this, let's pretend that he was, that the castration would prevent him from any sort of sexual behavior, although he could always still murder someone out of anger, right? Or, and, or sexual sexual anger, right? But mm. let's just say that the castration argument was real and that this terrible thing did happen to him. He didn't cut his own testicles off. It, you could make a case that after 15 years in prison, that was a terrible injustice that happened to that guy. And you know what? We're going we're gonna to release that guy. Like, I, I hear that argument. I don't know whether I would have done it, but I hear that argument. Um, but Mike Huckabee made that decision because he believed all that nonsense about Bill Clinton, 
all that right-wing vitriol, all that stuff from Richard Mellon Scaife, all that nonsense that... Uh, that Dubon might have been innocent all along. Right. That so, was pressure put on him by Yeah, he wasn't Clinton innocent or, right along. You know one reason why you know he didn't? Because he got out and he murdered and killed two women, right? So one of whom, the, the daughter of the women we just, we just uh, in the ad we just aired. So, you know, he, all that stuff been in, in blinded by the right. All these books that documented this nonsense. Steve Dunleavy, this anti-American, Jack, there isn't, Jack Bag isn't enough for Steve Dunleavy, writer for the New York Post. <laughs> horrible, horrible, indecent human being who has blood on his hands today wrote about how Dumont should get out again and again. And this was the, this is who Mike Huckabee was listening to. Yeah. This was what penetrated Mike Huckabee's ears. And then had him apparently, according to many reliable media reports, write a letter at some point to DeMond saying, it is my sincere hope that you were released. And then Huckabee's defense had always been that technically the Arkansas Parole Board does the releases, not the governor. But they listened to him. He wanted it to happen, and it happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now these two people are dead. DeMond, by the way, died, was convicted of one of the crimes, was about to be charged with the second crime when he died in prison, apparently of, of, of cancer. But I mean, the, the outcome of the case is terrible all by itself. But the, the insight into who this guy, who we like to think of, oh, he's super uh, dedicated, man of God and faith. He's jovial, but he, you could get along You know, with he him. plays the saxophone, I think, or he plays some instrument, he, jam, he plays the guitar, he jams in a band. Right, JR? Like we've seen. Huckabee does? Huckabee, yeah. Like he's, and he can play a little bit. Like yeah. so, yeah. And, and, and so in, in Arkansas, it was like, hey, look, we had fan. Clinton who played the sax, and then we got Huckabee, and he plays in a band, and, and he's super folksy. You know, yeah. and, and likable. It's amazing that these things are even relevant. But he's as, he's dumber than Michelle Bachman. He believes conspiracy theories. Crazy stuff. Bill Clinton didn't murder people. You just didn't like him. Yeah. That was it. You didn't like him, and he won twice. Um, <laughs> and could have won a third time and a fourth time, I think. I think mm -hmm. he could have been president for six terms. Yeah, maybe he'll come back. Um, yeah, if there's the only way to get him into the White House. So, um, you know, regardless of whether you agree with this policy, so the insight that the, so read about Wayne Dumont, because the insight that it gives you into the kind of man that Mike Huckabee is, 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 is worth the time it takes to get through the nonsense uh, and to find out what's right and what's wrong in that yeah. case. Yeah, and it might be that you'll never see that that ad aired again, but it's not impossible to imagine that another candidate, perhaps one who's not as worried as Mitt Romney was of, of looking desperate, would bring up that case, air an ad involving that case, and that could be a big problem for Mike Huckabee since he's almost certainly running for the presidency.